welcome to My Counselor Online. I'm Tori and I'm super excited to be sitting down with one of our counselors here at MCO. This is Allison Pitts. Allison, I'm so excited to talk through your article, Help for Maintaining Connection in Long-Term Relationships. I think that this article is just a really great place um, to start for couples who are are dating, are married, are just pursuing that long-term relationship. Um, and I just love all of the insight that you bring into it. And so I just want to start by asking you a few questions. I want to ask, um, you know, about how you open the article with um, relationships just kind of changing and shifting over time. You know, the butterflies go away, things might feel less special or exciting. And I'm just wondering kind of from your perspective, why is that? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think there's a lot of different ways to answer it. But I think like the the, the butterflies come from this uh, place of newness and excitement. And you're learning a lot about each other, right? And so there's this, um, there's a sense of other, right? Like your partner is new and different and fun and you want to learn and like they're other, right? And then as you grow and learn more about each other, you settle into this space of familiarity, right? Which is a good thing. We like that familiarity. We desire that familiarity. But in that familiarity, we lose that sense of other that we kind of had in the beginning that uh, draws us to them, right? It's so it's this, this dynamic of we want that comfort and that familiarity, but we kind of have this space where we miss the, the other and the excitement and the uncertainty almost right? Even though we desire it. And so it's this interesting internal push-pull that we have in relationships, what we want, right? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I've seen that in my own marriage and in my relationships, I'm sure that you have as well. Um, just the yeah. longer you're together, you know, the more comfortable things are, which is great um, yeah. and so good, but it also, you know, can definitely lead to that just familiarity um, and things just kind of becoming too comfortable almost where, you know, there's not as much intentionality um, and things like that. And so that's something, you know, you talk about in the article, just, you know, really pursuing that, really pursuing that other person. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you touch on is assumptions um, and just that we assume that we can read our partner's minds. So I guess I would love to know how can we practically avoid making those kind of hurtful, um, incorrect assumptions about the person that we're with. Yeah, yeah. I think the first part of that is that recognizing, is being able to recognize that that's what we're doing, right? I think sometimes, um, sometimes we just like, oh, well, I know what they're going to do already, or I know what they're going to say already. And so it's starting to notice when that's happening, and then checking it with your partner, checking it with your spouse, right? Like, hey, the story I'm telling myself in my head <laughs> about what you're going to say or about what you're going to do or about what you're thinking is this. Like, am I right? Right? So it's, again, bringing in that same curiosity and, sh and sharing it with your partner right? That you're checking it, that you're noticing that it's happening and you're taking it to them and you're checking it, right? So that that's also going to build connection because then it's a conversation starter. It's a place to bring them into what's going on in your internal world, right? And being curious about where that came from in you as well. Like, where did that assumption come from in me? Is that based on my reality of what's actually happening in the relationship? Or is that based on maybe something completely different that's spilling over into how I'm perceiving my partner in my relationship? Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, so you, I mean, you touch on that, you mentioned multiple ways to kind of fight this familiarity and, and, you know, have that connection in a long-term relationship, you know, not yeah. making assumptions and, and coming at it with curiosity is one of them. Another one that you mentioned is working through your hurts, um, the old and the new. And I would love it if you could just emphasize on what that means. Yeah, yeah, and I think like this one feels, I think the most vulnerable and the most scary for people because, because we're hurt, right? And we either go into the space of, I don't wanna share my hurts with my spouse because I don't wanna be a burden, 
or we go into, I don't want to share my hurts with my spouse or partner um, because I'm afraid that if I share it with them, they're going to hurt me again. Right. And so it's really like trying to, if there's safety, if there's not safety, if it's an emotional abusive relationship, like that's a different issue and that maybe we'll have some different techniques and different things around that. So if that's the context, like these are not for you, okay? But if it's an emotionally safe relationship, if there is that benefit of the doubt that you know your partner loves you and you know your partner has your back and is supportive, then it is it is important to be able to even say like, you know what, like I'm kind of having a hard time coming to you with this stuff because I've been hurt and I'm afraid. I don't know how you're going to show up with me. I don't know if you can be there for me in this, right? So there's a, there's a therapist that I like to steal from who talks about slicing it thinner, right? Making it smaller. If saying exactly what's on your heart, saying exactly how you've been hurt feels too scary, then talk about how it feels scary to talk about, right? Break it down into bite-sized pieces so that you're still inviting your partner in to the space with you, right? Um, but it maybe can feel a little bit more manageable. Mm, that's really, really good advice. I'm going to take that. That's awesome. <laughs> I stole it. I stole it from someone else. Yeah, but that is that is great advice. And I just appreciate you speaking that that into this conversation. Um, one of the other things that you talk about or two of the other things is the healthy sense of togetherness as well as a healthy sense of apartness. So could you kind of talk about each of those um, and talk through what that looks like when it's done right? Healthy togetherness and healthy apartness will look different for each couple depending on their personality and depending on what they need in a relationship. Um, with healthy togetherness, uh, really comes down to being intentional with each other. That when we're spending time together, when me and my partner are spending time together, we're putting our phones down, we're taking the TV off, and we're just really focusing on each other and being present with each other um, and making sure that whatever busy lifestyle we have going on that we're setting aside that time that we can do that right that we're even if we're not able to go on a date depending on what the world looks like or what your schedule looks like if there's kids but even if it's like okay 20 minutes we're gonna spend talking even before we turn the lights off and go to bed just because like I like you and I want to spend time with you I want to look at your face without like a thousand distractions coming up in terms of the healthy sense of apartness, I, I really think that's important because I think a, a lot of times in modern society, there's this expectation that your partner needs to fill all of your needs, right? When the reality is that's probably not the most practical, you're putting a lot of expectation on one person, right? Which if I were to switch that and see if, or think about my partner meeting me to meet every single one of his emotional needs, I would probably get overwhelmed by that, right? So just noticing and acknowledging that we need more than one input. We need more than one human in our life, right? Like God made us social beings so that we can be in community. Um, so just having, having other people in your life and having other people that can speak into you because then it... It, it also serves as a protection. Like if you need wisdom in what's going on in your relationship, or you just need a different set of eyes to talk through something challenging. Like it just provides uh, a different level of support and iron sharpening iron that, that I think is really healthy and I think is something that you need. Like for some people that looks like having hobbies and activities outside of um, what's going on in the marriage, or just even if that's just different friendships and different people you can connect with. Um, and healthy apartness also means really protecting the marriage as well, right? Like you don't want to have relationships with opposite sex people that might feel inappropriate in the context of being married, right? Like my husband and I personally have a rule where we don't hang out one-on-one -on -one with somebody of the opposite sex um, just to protect us and protect our marriage right so that's also I think healthy apartness is thinking about those things like where are our boundaries as a couple 
um, when we are spending time apart, what's a healthy way to, to protect that, right? We need a part-time and we want to make sure that the part-time we're spending is still wise and healthy and honoring to our spouse, even in the times when we're not together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So lastly, you know, you talk at the end of the article just about the importance of God being at the center of the relationship. What practical advice would you give to a couple struggling to do that? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think like so much of what happens in my brain is it really does depend on the couple. But just some quick things off the top of my mind is, is wondering, being curious about what are ways that we can pray more together? right? Even going into the Bible app and picking a devotional that you guys can do together, whether you're talking about it or communicating through the Bible app, you can message back and forth there. Um, Or even just having that sense of intentionality as you grow and you learn from the Lord, you're sharing that with your partner, right? I think sometimes Um, at least for me, I can speak for myself, when I'm not in a healthy place with the Lord, that impacts my relationship with my husband in the sense that I'm not able to bring those things to him. So having that question of how's my time with the Lord doing? And if there's any areas that need to be checked or that need to be grown in that, then start having those conversations with your spouse, bringing them into, including them in, your process and where you're at with the Lord so that they can speak into that. They can pray with you. They can agree with you. They can encourage you. And then it starts the conversation, right? Now we're building that bridge, if you will, that we can talk about our spiritual lives together. 